Hey everybody, what is up? This is DJ Paul, and what I'm gonna be doing is explaining how to get rust off of your speaker grills. So if you have any grills that look like this here, I'm gonna be explaining how for a very low price, without having to buy new grills, you can get them looking basically brand new. Um, so it's not just painting them, there's a, there's a little bit more to the process, and I'll explain the process that I did and how you can do it yourself. So first, let me talk about what you need to actually have. First thing, obviously, you need to have rusty speakers that you need to uh, you want to remove the rust for. Otherwise, this isn't going to be really worth much. Um, some of the stuff you'll need to get is some steel wool, which will help uh, get some of the rust and paint off. You'll need to get this rust oleum rust dissolver. This is the exact stuff you need. Don't get any knockoff brand. Get the actual rust oleum stuff. This is the uh, the gel that that you want to get. Uh, you also want to get some sort of cleaning brush, and this is this most of the stuff you can just find at Home Depot or your standard grocery store. Um, other than one thing, which I had to order on Amazon, and I'll explain. But I'll have links to all these products in the description in case you want to buy it. But uh, a lot of this stuff you can get cheaper locally, so just go by Home Depot, and you can pick up uh, the Rust Oleum and any of this other stuff. Um, you'll also need spray paint or just any sort of paint that you'll want to use. Um, I got the Rust Oleum. I got this stuff. It's just the flat black. 2x which is paint and primer and i paid about six bucks for it you'll need 3m77 adhesive spray to attach the foam to the grill because you're going to be taking that foam off in order to remove the rust and you'll also need to buy some speaker grill foam um, this is the stuff i bought on amazon you want it to be acoustically transparent or reasonably transparent especially if you're doing them for top speakers for subwoofers you probably don't have to worry as much but um i'll Put a link to the stuff that I bought, which is actually thicker in general than, than most of the stuff, but probably doesn't matter too much as long as it's stuff that's designed to be put in speaker cabinets. So you look at all this, it's like, you know, 50 bucks max for all this stuff or, you know, some of the stuff you probably already have, but you probably, you shouldn't be paying more than, you know, 50, $60 for all this material rather than paying, you know, for these SRXs, the grills are like 200 or more a piece. So, um, you save a lot of money doing this and you can do this for multiple grills. I'm sorry, these are the, for my VRX subs. So the first thing you wanna do is just take off the grills. You need to probably unscrew them with a drill or something, and you need to remove the foam. So what I did, and this is what helps, is I got the brush, I wet the brush, and I just scraped off all the foam. Um, the steel wool can help here too, but you need to get the adhesive and the foam off because you're gonna be needing to um, dissolve the rust. So um, that's kind of what I did. I, I tried to scrape it all off, and then I got it wet and scrubbed it. And you also wanna get some of the top rust off and any of the paint that's just sort of flaking off because you want to, when you put the rust dissolver on, you're gonna to need to, you want it to get to as much as the rust as possible. So if there's any rust under the paint um, that's gonna be eating through, you wanna just strip it um, as much as possible. Then you want, then what you wanna do is um, spray, spray it wet. I did this in a shower with one of those little wands so you can actually spray it. And then you apply the Rust-Oleum and you may need to apply it multiple times. So the way that I applied it is I actually took my brush and I sprayed the Rust-Oleum on the cleaning brush and just did these huge strokes because there was rust on the inside of these little circles as well. Um, so I needed, I did the front and back. I did it probably, you know, they say, oh, you may need to do it twice if it's really bad. I did do these like four times. They were so bad. Um, and some of these, you know, they'd been on rentals. Some of my VRX subs had been used and I just really needed to I guess, take care of them. I really needed to do this process. So um, once again, you can spray the rest oleum on the grill, but if it's a grill like this where there are a lot of holes, it's not gonna stick. Um, you basically, you can spray it on the brush and apply it and then you just let it sit for 60 minutes or for like 30 minutes and then you rinse it off and you wanna dry it with a towel because you don't want, without the, the paint there, it's very likely if the bare metal is exposed that it'll rust again. So dry it off with a towel. You may need to do it multiple times like I did until you don't see any more really rust. I mean, that's really the goal, but this stuff will work. You apply the rust oleum, you scrub it. You, you can, the brush was nice cause it would cause it to foam. So I could just scr scrub it on, wait 30 minutes, rinse it off and then dry it and then do the process again. I did the front and the back, um, all multiple times, but, um, yeah, the, the goal here is to get rid of this stuff and you do this in a well ventilated space because this rust oleum stuff, it is acid and it, it will eat through. So um, I did this in my bathroom. I had a fan. I turned the bathroom fan on. I had an air cleaner. I opened up all the windows and made sure to like ventilate the fumes out because you don't want to be breathing that shit. Um, then what you want to do is just rinse, of course, and dry. You don't want to let it stay wet. Um, so uh, you can use an old towel or rags or you, I wouldn't recommend paper towels because those can get caught on the metal, um, which is great. So just rinse it and dry it. 
Um, this is where that steel wool can help too, to really strip it off, to really strip off some of the stuff in between applying the Rust-Oleum, to strip off some of the stuff and some, maybe even some of the paint, apply the steel wool, and then apply it again, do this again. Then what you're gonna do is you need to actually spray paint it. So the one on the right I had painted and the one on the left you ha I haven't. So you can see that even before I painted the speaker on the left, a lot of that rust is gone. A lot of that rust is taken care of by the rust dissolver. Um, you can see places where the, the paint has been stripped as well because the rust has eaten through basically all the paint. So um, you wanna give it a nice coat. Um, you actually wanna apply two coats, I would say. So do the front and the back, let it sit, let it kind of dry, do it again, and then they, they should be um, much better. So once again, just be sure to apply those two coats and, and pick a good color. I mean, I just pick black. I mean, it, it is what it is, but it doesn't, doesn't matter too much um, as long as you're, you're consistent with all of your speakers and stuff. Most are black, but I guess if you wanted to do white, you could do that too. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what you can do with this. Um, then what you want to do is, is get the foam, get your, your acoustic foam and cut it to match the grill. So what I did is I used like a metallic Sharpie to kind of get the edges and I cut it a little large and then I sort of trimmed it down as I needed to, um, but kind of get a, got a rough shape first and cut it down. You want to cut it to sort of match the grill. So here's me cutting it on top, just place it on the grill. And then what you need to do is apply the spray adhesive. Once again, you'll, you know, I did this outside and in like a garage or something, but you want to spray it on the grill. You don't want to spray it on the foam and apply it to the grill because most of the time your grill is going to have all these holes. So if you spray it on the foam and then stick it to the grill, there's going to be all these places where the adhesive is exposed and you're going to have dust collect on it. So instead spray the adhesive on the back of the grill and then apply the foam to the adhesive so that this, the spray adhesive that you know gets on the ground, it doesn't get stuck. Um, so, so that's kind of what I did after I'd cut them. And you can see, I didn't cut it super well because this is gonna be behind the grill, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And I kind of oversized it, and I knew I was gonna come back later with like a box cutter or something and just kind of strip off the pieces so it can fit, but I, I didn't wanna make it too small. That's what I was worried about, um, which is why I applied it first, and then I was like, okay, I'll go trim it with a pair of scissors or a box cutter later. Um, then you, what you want to do, of course, let it dry, let the foam actually attach to the grill, which may take, you know, some time and then, um, reattach it with the screws and everything. And that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple, but you, you know, you want to be sure you're using these, these products and the right products. Um, that 3M adhesive is, is really good. It's really sticky. Um, could be a good or a bad thing. So it is going to stick and the, the grill is going to stay there. And if you do this right and you know, you store your subs and take care of them well, you shouldn't have to do this all that often unless they're getting used in really wet or humid environments. So I keep mine inside and in room temperature can, you know, temperature controlled place. And I use the covers pretty much all the time. So when I have my SRX subs, I never had to do this, but some of the VRX ones, some of the ones I bought used to increase my fleet when they were with other, all these supply chain issues and things, um, I did actually have to, to buy some used and some of them had grills that I needed to take care of. So that's kind of what I did. Um, one last tip I, I want to say is if you see any of the adhesive left, so maybe you try applying the foam and it's a little bit off, so you adjust it and the adhesive gets stuck from the grill onto the foam and it kind of shifts over and now you get um, adhesive that's being viewed. You want to get rid of that stuff because that's where dust can attach and it just, it's white, it looks really bad. So you can see it here on this sub on the right and then on the left on this other sub too. So the way you can get rid of this is I tried a couple different things. The first thing you do is just let it dry. You got to let it dry so that it, it'll come off. And then what you can do is get a Q-tip and get acetone or which is nail polish remover and just dip the Q-tip in the acetone and go around the hole. You know, you don't want to poke through the foam, so be kind of gentle, but go around and you can you can go down like and and just kind of wet it so that it, and it'll dissolve the, the adhesive spray. In fact, there's acetone in the adhesive spray, which is kind of interesting. But uh, my girlfriend, she's a she's a chemical engineer and she was kind of explaining how this worked and and why this <laughs> why the chemical, why this causes it to, to get rid of it, which was a very good idea. So use the acetone to, to dissolve it. It works really well. You'll see um, in the next picture how I got rid of all that stuff. And you'll probably have to use a bunch of Q-tips. Like I use probably like a dozen or so um, just on all these holes on, on both speaker on all the speakers that I was doing. Um, you can use front and back the Q-tip and just just get rid of that stuff because otherwise, once again, it's going to just be sticky. It's going to stay there. And even if it's not sticky, 
to touch, it's going to like dust and stuff's going to attach and it's just going to look bad. So get, get rid of that, let it dry and then get rid of it. Um, and from there, you should be good. You can see here's the before and after pick of these subs. It made a big difference and it didn't cause me to, um, yeah, have to spend a bunch of money on new grills because that would have cost hundreds of dollars and I spent easily less than a hundred dollars, probably like 50 bucks on all the materials. Um, and a big shout out to the people at River Oaks uh, Body Shop here in Houston, Texas, who told me about the Rust-Oleum and um, that was the main piece that really helped me. But, uh, you know, if you just follow this process, you should have uh, good, good results. So uh, thanks for watching. Hope this is helpful and uh, keep those speakers looking new. All right, peace.